What we're looking at here is an area of the city of Philadelphia just north of downtown. And what we want to do is redevelop this area to create new economic potential. We can see here the land use for our study area. The red is commercial, the orange is residential or mixed use, the green is open space, park space, and the purple is institutional. Overlaid on top of that, we can see abandoned buildings in dark yellow. They're extruded higher. And then the light yellow buildings are areas that have been identified as underutilized by the city. What we want to do is combine the land use information, the parcel availability, and the transportation information to do a suitability analysis to see where we have redevelopment potential. We can see that here the blue line is the existing light rail system that comes in. And we can see there's, there's not a lot of redevelopment potential in its existing condition. So what we want to do is add a new light rail system coming from downtown that will connect this area to the, to the main downtown. You can see us adding in that rail system. It comes in as the light blue line. We're then going to just consume that new rail line in our suitability analysis and see how that's changed uh, the redevelopment potential within this area. When we finish running that model we can see on the west side an increased area of redevelopment potential represented by the dark blue. But on the north side we only got a little bit of increased redevelopment potential. So we're going to want to modify that light rail route. We're going to change its location and make it loop more through the north side and take a less direct route and then rerun that suitability analysis and we'll see a fairly drastic change in redevelopment potential on the north side. When we zoom in we're actually going to start adding in simple building massing models. What we have is we have a template here. That template has buildings of different stories and it's very easy to just go in and sketch the base of a building and the uh, height snaps and you can do that for a whole area. So here we have a whole collection of, of massing models for for new buildings that we want to develop in the area. We have a data management model. This data management model does a variety of tasks. One of them is filling in the buildings, existing buildings, around our proposed buildings, our massing models, to give them some context. The second thing it does is actually create floors for those buildings, and it splits those floors into what we call suites or analysis areas, subdividing them so that you have the corners, the sides, and the center of all the rooms available with separate features to do analysis on. Then we're going to bring up a different template. This one's for transportation, and we're going to add in some stations and stops along our rail line. We're going to use those stations and stops to conduct analysis on these spaces inside the buildings. We're going to be looking at commercial use uh, suitability, so retail suitability. Um, that's based on proximity to a station. The closer a space is to a station, the more traffic it's going to get, the more suitable it is for retail. So you can see immediately the impact of a station on a building. Here we have a stop, and a stop has different connectivity than a station. A stop connects to buildings on the third level, so it creates higher suitability at the third level. If we change that into a station and rerun the analysis, you can see now the first floor gets a higher suitability because there's connectivity across all three floors. It's a very local analysis. When we add a stop right near a building, we can immediately see the impact on retail suitability. Now that we've done our analysis to determine where the best places are within these buildings for retail, we're actually going to start placing some markets and retail inside these buildings. So we have the slider bar tool allows us to carve down to the first floor of the building. And then on the first floor, we're going to sketch in a new marketplace. Markets are important because they're one of the things that are going to drive residential suitability. The closer you are to a market, the better you'll be for residential development. The second thing, however, is the quality of views. So here we're looking again at the whole Logan Circle area, and you can see five red dots. Those red dots indicate areas that are attractive to look at. At the top we have the Archdiocese, below it we have Logan Circle itself, below that the Franklin Institute, and then on the west side we have these two parks that are considered attractive. 
So we developed a line of sight model, and what that model does is basically checks each space within the building, each of these suites, and figures out how many of these attractive views that suite can see. So we can see kind of the spider work network of, of connecting lines between the suites and those views. And the suites that can see more of the attractive areas within our study area are darker green, and the areas that have fewer views are the beige color. So here in the back we see this four-story building, it has no views, and we want to make sure that every building actually has some views to these attractive areas within our study area. So we're going to start editing, go in, select that building, remove it, and then in the exact same location we're going to sketch a taller building, in this case a ten-story building, just by selecting the template and drawing it in. Now that we've changed the height of that building, we need to update the floors. So we rerun the data management model, in this case just on that building, so it's much faster. Here we can see the floors. We turn off the exteriors. There's the interiors of the floors. And then we rerun that line of sight analysis. And we can see the upper floors of that building have a darker green color, meaning they have more views. So now we're going to take this view quality assessment, combine it with proximity, to existing markets and we get residential suitability in our buildings. So now we're going to go in and, and start finishing up our interior land use plan. We can use that tool to carve down to the first level. On the first level we're going to make all retail. It's right next to a station plus it's got good sidewalk frontage so we want to make sure that that space is utilized for retail. At the second floor the, the corner here nearest the station we again want to set aside for retail because it's got connectivity to that station and we know that will drive pedestrian traffic. On the other side though we have lower quality views, it's not good for residential and it's probably not going to have a lot of uh, traffic going to it because it's on the second floor so we're going to set that aside as office space. We're worried about the impact that this building is going to have on surrounding parking so we're going to put a parking structure on the third floor. Just have a ramp coming off one side that people can get up to this uh, parking area. Then once we get up to the fourth floor, we look at the suitability, we're starting to get some good views on one side of the building, and uh, we want to actually set this aside for residential development. So we make this floor residential, and we know at this point that for the next couple of floors, the, the fifth floor and the sixth floor, we're going to want to make them residential as well because they have high quality views. So we just duplicate our existing residential up to the fifth floor and then duplicate it again up to the sixth floor. Now we have a six-story building. We can do that for all of our buildings, all of our proposed buildings across the study areas. We can see that kind of snap in. So now we've got a simple idea of what the a bubble diagram of what the interior space of the buildings can be like. We need to improve the exterior of the building. So we're going to take that massing model, convert it to uh, a 3D model in ArcGIS, a multi-patch, then export that multi-patch to a Collada file and then we can bring that cloud file into SketchUp and then use it to create a more attractive model Then bring that SketchUp model back in to replace the shell and we get a much more attractive shell right so there we have uh, windows and those windows are actually transparent so you can see into the space inside and how it's being utilized since it's GIS data we can actually get an estimation of the square footage of the different types of land uses we've allocated within our buildings and compare that to the requirements of our development program to see if we're meeting our needs, meeting the expectations of, of uh, the client or of the planner. And there we have a 3D land use plan done from start to finish.